Yeah, you brought up a couple of really interesting points in there. The, the first one was the discussion about the genetics, and that's something I've seen some data on as well as that our, our leaner genetics are producing more heat increments than than maybe something the 10 years ago. And so can you maybe give us an idea of, of what that looks like? Sure, sure. Um, well, some of the some of the best, at least scientific data, there's a, a paper from 2014 showing about a 16% increase in, in metabolic heat production. Um, and in terms of you know heat stress sensitivity, you know, we when we think of heat stress sensitivity, it's it's like a balance equation, right? So on one side of the equation, you have heat gain. So it's heat gain from the body, just its basal body temperature. You have heat gain from the environment. That's when you know high ambient temperatures come into play. And you have heat gain from metabolism. So um, things like you know milk production, you know gestating fetuses, so the heat of those fetuses, and the list goes on, or you know muscle muscle mass, right? And so more muscle mass, you get more heat production. On the other side of that equation, you have heat loss, and so things like you know, conducting into the floor, you know, you see a sow, it's very hot, it lays down, it's trying to get rid of heat into the floor. And then things like like panting, right? So so respiration rates and things like that. Um, it, it, if these pigs were in the wild or if they're in an outdoor setting, maybe wallowing, you might add to the heat loss side. But for, for most instances, we're talking about just panting and skin loss. And so we're always trying to keep that, that balance right in the middle so that that animal can maintain a normal body temperature. Well, if you, if you start adding over to that heat gain side of the equation, things like increasing metabolic heat production because of greater heat gain from lean mass, you start to tip the scales. And so if you add anything else, like increasing the, the, the environmental temperature a little bit, you're going to tip that scale even further. And so you're, you've already skewed it to hyperthermia, to, to those pigs being hot, and then you add a little bit more environmental heat on it. And then that, that's when you're getting the heat stress occurring. Um, and so really, again, it's just we're, we're, we've, you know, it's great because we have higher, more efficient pigs. They, they produce well. That's great. It's good for, you know, food security. Um, it's good for the producer. It's, it's great. But we also have to consider how do we better manage those animals, you know, in a rapidly um, changing environment, right? We know it's, it's obviously getting hotter, so.